A stab in the back. That's how France described Australia's decision to scuttle a deal to buy its submarines in favor of American ones. But France says it isn't just about the tens of billions of dollars in lost business. France's foreign minister said it was unacceptable behavior towards an ally and hinted U.S. President Joe Biden wasn't that different from his predecessor. Ludovica Brignola has more. A half-hour call between Presidents Joe Biden and Emmanuel Macron, described as friendly by the White House, seems to have calmed the waters between the U.S. and France. Paris had reacted with fury after Australia decided to work with Washington and London to build nuclear-powered submarines. At the same time, it pulled out of a $66 billion contract to buy conventional French submarines. France said its ally, the US, had engaged in lies and duplicity as it secretly formed a security partnership with the UK and Australia. For the first time in its history, it recalled its ambassadors to Washington and Canberra. But the alliance of the three nations hasn't only enraged Paris, it's also likely to have lasting effects on the world security landscape. The main focus of the alliance is widely perceived to be that of constraining China. The security pact was announced as the post-Brexit UK is trying to recalibrate its global defence strategy and US focus is pivoting towards the Asia-Pacific and away from the Middle East. According to some analysts, the alliance seems to undermine the role of NATO and exposes a lack of unified strategy among its allies as to how to counter China. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson says the new alliance does not threaten relationships with any other allies and wasn't created with belligerent intentions. This is uh, fundamentally a, a great step forward for global security. Uh, it's three very like-minded allies standing shoulder to shoulder, creating a, a new partnership for the sharing of, of technology. It is not exclusive. Uh, it is not trying to, to shoulder anybody out. It is not adversarial towards China, for instance. But the three partners have already ruled out adding other countries such as India or Japan to the deal. The alliance has the potential to become a powerful military and economic bloc, simultaneously rivaling China, but also representing an alternative to the EU. Biden didn't make any formal apology when he spoke on the phone with Macron, but the rift still seems to be on the mend. The French president has agreed his ambassadors to the US and Australia would return to their posts. He and Biden also plan to meet next month in Europe. The two leaders might have smoothed things over, but the new alliance is still likely to shake up the security dynamics in Europe and Asia and have a critical impact on the future of NATO. Ludovica Brignola. Straight talk. And to break down how this latest fallout could affect the U.S.'s alliances, joining me now from Antalya, Turkey, is Tarek Ozu. He is a professor of international relations and an academic advisor at the Foreign Policy Institute. And from Washington, D.C., Michael Doran. He is a senior fellow at the Hudson Institute. Gentlemen, a warm welcome to you both. Michael, could you talk to us about the uh, damage this latest dispute between France and the U.S. has inflicted on bilateral relations and what needs to be done moving forward? Well, uh, thank you. Uh, this is, uh, I think, the right decision that the Biden administration made uh, with regard to uh, the submarines, but it was um, handled, um, I, I think, in an incredibly... Um, unprofessional manner. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and and the re the result of that is, I think, a serious rift with the with the French. It's hard to say uh, at this point. You know, is this as bad as the rift in 1956 over the Suez Crisis, uh, or uh, or when De Gaulle uh, pulled out of the NATO command, or uh, are we talking more about, say, the conflict over the um, over the Iraq War when the French didn't support the um, the Americans. I, I, I don't know exactly where to put it, but it's in, in the, on that level, I, I, I think. Um, I'm not sure if it was entirely um, avoidable, but certainly there could have been much more consultation with the French um, from, the, from the very beginning. They are allies of the United States. They are working with the United States in East Asia. They are, uh, in contrast to many of America's other allies, yeah. actually in the hard power game. 
So Tarek, how will this latest rupture impact NATO's um, credibility and has the mishandling of the issue by the US proved French President Emmanuel Macron right in his uh, thoughts that NATO is brain dead? Actually, I am of the view that uh, this one-sided unilateral American decisions might have negative consequences on the future of the alliance. It doesn't mean that NATO states will be quite numbered in the to come, but the credibility of the global wide security organization will be quite diminished. This is quite obvious. Yes. Because within NATO, there are multiple viewpoints, not only regarding how to deal with China, but also regarding how to construct a new relationship with the United States on a much more equal basis. Because Europeans have a fundamental problem with the way the United States treats European allies. The Europeans are asking for much more equality and much more respectful relationship. But on the other hand, we also know that uh, so long as European Union doesn't have a military and defense capability, yes. cooperating with the United States in far distant geographical locations, the Americans wouldn't pay any attention to what they think. So this is a kind of uh, burden or sharing of burden problem. It's a kind of leadership problem. Uh, it, has multi, it is a multifaceted problem. But most important, I think, uh, the United States has quite clearly shifted its strategic focus away from Middle East and Europe to East Asia and the Pacific region. And in this particular geography, traditional allies in the region are much more important than traditional European allies. So, so Americans have already made it very clear. Okay, so Michael, uh, what do you make of Biden's foreign policy decisions in the last eight months? Because Biden started his administration with a slogan, America is back, saying it would uh, replace his predecessor's America first uh, foreign uh, policy approach. But given the uh, chaotic exit from Afghanistan, Biden's help in trashing a uh, French deal and pushing pressure on its allies to only focus on China doesn't seem like what he had promised. So is the French president, is the French actually foreign minister right? Is Biden's erratic and unilateral foreign policy the same as Trump's? Well, I think that there are absolutely some very significant continuities between uh, uh, Obama, Trump, and Biden. There's, there's no doubt about that. Um, and the Afghanistan withdrawal is, a, is, an, um, is an example of that because Trump was moving in the same direction. However, I think the, the, the Biden um, uh, implementation of the policies has been um, extraordinarily ham-handed. Mm -hmm. um, and and in, in, the, in, inclu in this, this French decision, as I said, I think it was actually done unprofessionally. Uh, the, there, there, was a, there, there is an alternative position or a kind of intermediary position, which I think the Trump administration was moving toward, which is that we, as we shift toward China, um, we, continue to, uh, we continue to exercise um, America's deterrent capacity in a different way. So we don't just abandon theaters like Afghanistan. We remain engaged, but with less ground forces, uh, um, uh, uh, with less ground forces engaged. Mm -hmm. Similarly, we have to bring along our allies in, um, uh, in, in, uh, in the Middle East and in, and in Europe. Um, we have to bring them along into this new competition with China. I don't even think the American public has been brought along into this, uh, into this conflict. As I said, there's an awareness of the military imbalance in East Asia now that has impressed itself on the very top level of decision makers, but it hasn't been explained um, yes. in, in greater detail to everybody else. Uh, so how will the U.S.'s uh, Tariq obsession with China impacted Europe as it is? which is left to deal uh, with a series of problems in its imminent neighborhood as well as the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Europeans do not want to find themselves in the middle of this two global behemoth. They don't want to choose any side. It's quite obvious. Many research, uh, research undertaken in recent months or many was conducted by research reveal that majorities in different EU countries would like to have a kind of strategic, pragmatic, an economic cooperation based relationship with China rather than defining China as an existential challenge or threat. 
Uh, this is quite obvious, but Americans uh, find it difficult to understand why Europeans do not see the larger picture, why the Europeans do not see the fact that China has already posed a serious challenge to the liberal international order. But we also know that the Americans, started with Obama, continuing with Trump, and now with Biden in the White House, are giving the real damage to the so-called liberal international order by pursuing very illiberal and very aggressive foreign policies. Mm -hmm. Their competition, cooperation, and confrontation kind of relationship with China is, is, is quite impossible to find quite uh, really follows uh, across the European continent, I assume. So, uh, Michael, how will AUKUS change the balances in the Asia-Pacific region? And also to remind our viewers that that recent uh, Quad meeting uh, in Washington, is it likely to grow further? And how has this alliance unsettled Canada and New Zealand, the two other members of the Five Eyes? Uh, I, I, I think that the, the growth of the Quad is, uh, is almost an inevitability. Uh, be, in, unless the Chinese significantly change their uh, what's called a wolf warrior uh, diplomacy, um, the, you know we can criticize American foreign policy for being um, inept and and crude in some ways, uh, but it uh, in its crudity and uh, just sort of hard uh, um, uh, power. Uh, dimensions it pales in, in in comparison to the Chinese, um, who have you know if you followed what they've done with Australia in recent years, um, they have alien they had a, a very strong position in Australia and they have managed to alienate all significant elements of uh, uh, of Australian society. Similarly, I, I think we see similar dynamics in India. Uh, it's more it's much more difficult for historical reasons for India to align directly with the United States, but that seems to be the that seems to be the the trend, and I see no reason to believe it's going to um, uh, it's going to end. Um, the bigger uh, questions whether for as for Turkey and Europe are the ones that uh, that Tarek mentioned. Um, there's there there needs to be a a um, significant paradigm shift both in Europe and in America about Europe in order to accommodate this new um, kind of Asian centrism of American foreign policy. So, uh, Michael, Turkish President Erdogan uh, has also expressed discontent over the two country relations and Biden's continued support for the terror organizations in Syria and Iraq. Now that the U.S. is having problems with uh, two important NATO allies, how is it going to play out? Oh, the, that's uh, very, very hard to predict. Uh, I have my own very strong opinions about uh, uh, how it should play out. Uh, but um, uh, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not convinced it will. What I mean by that is I think that there are extraordinary opportunities here for Turkey uh, because we are moving back into a world where the hard power competitions are going to, uh, between, between uh, great powers, are going to be the primary uh, driver of uh, American policy. And in that respect, I think Turkey has assets that no other NATO member uh, that no other NATO member has, and it has a worldview and a capacity that uh, um, that is absent, uh, or, or almost nearly absent in the American uh, um, in the American alliance system. Uh, but at the moment, uh, uh, Washington is much more with reg with, with regard to Mediterranean matters and uh, Middle Eastern matters. Washington is more inclined these days to listen to uh, to France than to Turkey. All right, gentlemen, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Uh, thank you very much for joining us on Straight Talk.